it's JB Portello here, standing in for Jerry Horner. We're gonna do something a little different today. I thought, it, since it's Halloween and we're getting ready to go into November, that we could talk about something kind of fun, because that's what we like to do. I have two of my sisters here with me today. Now, I will tell you that this is Melissa Stratton, actually, who is a master gardener and a, a, a member of the Garden Club. But going forward, from now on, till this show's over, who are you? I'm Sister Corn. Yes, you are. And what do you have in your basket? Corn. Yes. And this is the more the kind of corn that we're talking about. Hard to buy, but you can get this kind. That's right. And over here, I have Marion Heath. And she is a member of the Garden Club. She also kind of works for the TV station, doing all kinds of odd jobs and things. But going forward, who are you today? I am a bean, but more than that, I'm a pole bean. Yes, you are. Sister bean. Sister bean. Sister bean. And going forward from that, I will now become Sister Squash. So here's the deal. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story, but it actually talks about how plants sustain each other and how uh, working together uh, food can become something important when you don't necessarily have meat. The three sisters, as you're going to find out, kind of makes a complete meal okay. and sustained the Native Americans for years. So, have you ever heard of that story called the Three Sisters? It's a Native American legend which refers to corn beans and squash. Now these beautiful sisters, right, we're beautiful, uh, are known as the sustainers of life. We grow together in the same mound, each one protecting the other one. The corn stands really tall mm -hmm. th so that the beans can have a pole to, to uh, climb on. And then uh, from there, uh, we're going to actually show you how to grow this garden in a few minutes. But uh, the squash vines act as a living mulch, taking care of everything. The beans put nitrogen back in the soil. And we're going to get there in a minute. We're going to talk a lot about that. These uh, particular vegetables sustained Native Americans for centuries. And to this day, they actually taught the settlers yeah. about this. Right. So at any rate, uh, each of these planted together contributes something. They provide a balanced diet from a single planting. So, let's go and learn how to grow a Three Sisters garden. Okay, so the very first thing that you would need to do to plant a Three Sisters garden, of course, is to have seeds. Mm -hmm. Now, you, it would be important. Uh, what if somebody bought bush beans? Would that be okay? Wouldn't be recommended because the bush bean spreads out where the pole beans climb right up the stalk of the corn. Exactly. And it wouldn't be good if they bought popping corn instead of this kind of corn. You've got to be careful what kind of corn you buy. That's right. There are so many kinds. Yes. Many kinds. Okay, now uh, you want to make sure that the squash seeds, too, are the, the trailing kind because they need to spread right. all over the ground. Most squash. There guys. are so many different kinds of squash. Pumpkins are squash. Melons, I mean, all, anything like that that binds. But uh, in a minute, you will see uh, when we switch back the different possibilities, some of the different possibilities. Okay, the best time to plant is uh, when the night temperatures stay at about 50 degrees, and that's usually in late May and early June. Mm -hmm. That's when you start it. So the first thing you do, or the next thing you do, is prepare the garden. Okay, so you would choose an area that receives at least six to eight hours of sunshine. Work in a gener generous amount of compost and, uh, and form a mound that's about 10 to 12 inches high and about four, inch four feet in diameter. Now you can also take this same thing we're talking about and put it in a tub, but right now we're gonna talk about a four by four sister's <laughs> garden. The top of the mound needs to be flat. Okay. And I, since I'm Sister Corn, you need to plant me about four seeds, about six inches apart in a square. And that way, as I grow, I provide support for Sister Bean. You know, like older sisters often do provide support for younger things. Mm -hmm. Things. <laughs> things. <laughs> well, speaking of things, 
<laughs> the next thing you would do is you would weed, of course, keep those weeds out of there, right? Yeah, oh, yes. yes. And then when the corn reaches about four inches tall, that's that, where you come in. That's once my bigger sister is about four to six inches tall, mm -hmm. that's when I am planted. Mm -hmm. And just about an inch under the soil, just sprinkle the soil over the top. And it's very simple. And you just water it and watch it start to sprout and crawl up the corn. That's right. That's right. So the next step would be weeding, of course. You, you keep everything weeded in between to make sure that we don't grow extra things we don't need. And uh, about a week after the beans begin to sprout, uh, you plant six squash seeds. And there's kind of a diagram showing on the screen right now about where to plant those. And about one inch deep and a foot from the base of the corn in the beans. You've got to leave room for things to grow and work together. And you would cover those seeds with soil and water the mound. That's the squash, any kind you want, really. Yeah. After that, what you need to do is wait for maturity. And you would continue to weed until the squash takes over and shades the whole ground. And that also keeps the weeds out. Do you know that? I knew that, mm -hmm. and I, but I also knew that our beans, our pole beans, they're going to keep growing, mm -hmm. but what we're going to find is you've got to keep harvesting them. That's right. Because if you don't keep harvesting them, then you're going to put all the nutrients in, or not nutrients, but all the growth into just the one bean stalks that are growing. Mm -hmm. Those are ready to be eaten. You can toss them in the salads. And another soups. reason beans are so good is because they're nitrogen fixers. They fix nitrogen in the soil. You know for a the lot because you're the big the sister. You know about all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now on the screen I would like to just show you what a, a mature Three Sisters Garden looks like. It's hard to see exactly what happens, but you can see how tall the corn is. Mm -hmm. Now the corn will begin to, in the fall, will begin to get yellow and start dying down. Mm -hmm. The beans will go through their cycle of harvesting like you talked about. And then the, that's when the squash kind of says, hey, here I am, pick me, yeah. right? That's right. Okay, so like I said, today's topic is not so much about a, a, an Indian story as it is about the fact that beans, corn, and squash contain complex carbohydrates, essential fatty acids, and all eight of the essential uh, amino acids, allowing that to be a complete food. And protein from the beans. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we hope that you have enjoyed that story. And now what I'd like to do is let's talk a little bit, ladies, about um, the kinds of uh, sister bean. I believe you have samples of yeah. different kinds of beans that some harvest. We have already. a lot of different beans. Sometimes you're familiar with finding the beans in the market that are already dry and hardened. And these are great for keeping over uh, through the, the months where we don't have the fresh bean and using them in soups and cooking them and maybe tossing them into salads once they've been cooked. The other thing to consider is that uh, you have the fresh bean that can be eaten immediately and when you're thinking of the pole bean, uh, keep in mind that when you let it grow too much, well it isn't too much in some cases, when you let it to grow big and it's bulging with those beans, those are the beans that you can dry to put back into your garden the next season. Exactly. And what about the corn? Show us what you have. Some well, up, some I ideas. have some decorative corn here. This corn, centuries ago, was the kind that the Indians would grow because things kind of got mixed up. They'd plant this color, and then they'd plant this color, and then they'd end up with this. So, But I know that here in the U.S., we tend to more prefer this kind of corn. So this is the kind of corn most people grow because this is decorative now. Right. And corn is... A really great you can do so many things oh, tell honey. them about the tell them of what you do it's special at Thanksgiving oh, with, with Christmas kind of a and corn. Easter yes. okay well I use hominy you know I mix my yellow and white hominy and in a casserole I, I butter my casserole and I layer some hominy and I put little squares of butter on top of it uh, some sour cream on top of it and then I do another layer, do the same thing, butter and sour cream, and then when oh, I salt and pepper each layer. And <laughs> the last layer, well, no, it's not a layer. I take a pint of heavy cream. Oh, my goodness. And pour over it. 
and cover it with shredded Monterey Jack cheese. Woo! And it bakes for one hour till the edges are all bubbly. It takes about six cans of hominy to do this. And it is a hit. People, I don't like hominy. Well, you'll like this hominy. <laughs> That's right. And actually, what is hominy? It is it's corn. corn. It's corn. It's been treated with lye. Yes. And that, that's like, oh my goodness. But no, that's what no, makes it hominy. That's what hominy. makes it hominy. Well, and I'd like to show you if you can uh, maybe look at some of the different kinds of squash here that could happen. Uh, this is a particular, this is an acorn squash that's easy to bake. Uh, this is spaghetti squash. Lovely. So quite honestly, uh, if you were watching your carbs, or if you just like something different, the inside of this becomes strings like spaghetti, and you can use tomato sauce over the top of that. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of fun. It's called a Turk's cap, but isn't it pretty? And also, That's you've got your everyday pumpkin, which so many things can be done with. Right? Isn't it fun this time of year? Yes. Pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread and pumpkin bread pudding. Pumpkin latte. Yeah. Oh, yes, pumpkin yeah. latte. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. This has been fun, and we hope you have learned a little bit about the Three Sisters. I personally am going to do this and maybe film it. Uh, all through the season so that we'll have this We're for later. To do this out in yes. the garden. If we did it in the, in the spring, garden. take this in consideration. Everybody who has maybe not a big yard, maybe they live in a mm -hmm. condo, they can do this in a big pot. That's right. Yeah. Everything, or just one of the plants, like the beans, and we can show you how that can be done. That'll absolutely, be absolutely. Okay, so now, um, before we go, let's talk about what it's time to do in the garden in November. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can, if you choose to ignore the winter preparations, that's okay, because the world's not going to come to an end. Right. But it just means that you have a little more work to do in the spring when, when there's never enough time to get the garden up and running. So um, let's talk about that. Um, Marian, what do you do for annuals and, and her, uh, herbs this time of year? Well, these are the summer annuals we're talking about. They're basically gone. Uh, but if you want color, Put some pansies out there. You'll have fun with well, that. And compost those plants you cut down. This is our garden, our master <laughs> gardener. That's right. Recycle, recycle. Recycle, recycle. What about perennials? Well, perennials are a different sort. Perennials you leave because those seed heads, the birds just love them and it's shelter for small animals. Perennials I like to cut back in the spring. Um, if you have mums, I don't do this, but you can spray deer repellent on them because deer love mums as well hostas, but they love mums, so you need to spray them. Um, about salvia, do not cut it back this time of the year because it's got hollow stems and it could freeze really well. Just wait on that one. Um, if you grow mon monarda, it's time to cut that back to about a third. If it's getting real bushy, take your shovel and dig up about a third of it and plant it elsewhere and you'll have more plants for the butterflies. Absolutely. All right, Marion, what do you do with your roses? Well, after a few freezes, consider cutting them back for the winter. Um, and it's real important to cut them back about three, oh, three feet so that they won't rock in the wind. Mm -hmm. That will protect the whole plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Missy, what, what do you do in your lawn? Well, Other than call the guy to mow it. No one. <laughs> What do you do for your yacht line? Well, I make sure that the last mowing of the season is with the leaves on the grass because it cuts it up and makes it available to the, to the grass. The one thing you don't do is leave those leaves on that grass yeah. over the winter. Marion can tell us something about that. Yes, if you leave the leaves on the grass, it just presses down. You can leave brown spots. You could get mold. Mm -hmm. And so this was not a master gardener having a lawn. This was <laughs> trial and error that I learned from. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, what do you do for your trees and shrubs? Well, November, this is the last time you want to protect them by planting them. It's the best time to do it, no later, because we're going to be too cold for planting our shrubs and trees. And um, it's also a good time to cut down those branches of the, uh, the dead branches, that is, of the uh, Rose of Sharon. Yes, yes. And finally, what about vegetables this time well, of year? Well, you know, we're not growing, some people have been growing some root vegetables, uh, and you can still be harvesting those at this time of the year, but those summer vegetables, those should be on the compost pile by now. Um, and speaking of that compost, this is a great place. If you have mulched last year's leaves, to dump them on your vegetable bed. 
because we don't want bare soil over the winter. That's right, but you mulch them up, you cut them up smaller yeah, first. Yeah. So you don't get that mold and, and things. Right. Absolutely. Because so really, there's no need, even though many people do it, and it's okay if you choose to do that. But I, for instance, I don't take my leaves and put them in a bag and take them to the stump dump oh, or wherever. No, I cut them up I. finer and I use that as mulch. Right. And it saves money mm -hmm. and it's great because it recycles mm -hmm. back to the earth. Mm -hmm. All right, well the main thing you need to do this time of year is just enjoy this weather. Yes. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Even today. And the colors this year are so exquisite. They're astounding. They really this are. is the best I've seen in 10 years. Yes. Absolutely. My camera's been real busy. Yes. Um, so if you have any questions, any other questions about that, just look up the Three Sisters because we're usually around town. You see yes. us. We don't always have Not our costumes our on. Though. Yeah, but no. we're here. Uh, but if you have questions uh, about gardening and over, remember the Master Gardener website. And that is bentoncountygardening.org. Okay? And it's just full of information. Uh, also, the Garden Club has great information, and you can go to Bella Vista Garden Club, all one big dot word, dot com website, and find out things there. The next Garden Club meeting will be in January. We don't have a, we have a luncheon uh, in December, and then we start again in January. Now, the Master Gardeners also are off in January, but we're still on the website. You can still find out about us. We start back in February. So, Thank you, Sister Corn. Oh, you're and welcome, Sister, Sister Pumpkin. It was a pleasure. I know, and this I hope everybody has enjoyed this information, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the program, and you'll turn in again next time. And since there aren't any roses to smell right now, just enjoy the day. Mm -hmm. Thank you.